Wales was transformed in the early 19th century with rapid industrialization, population growth, the arrival of migrant workers with their families, and a move from rural to urban living for a significant proportion of the population. Non-conformity emerged in the 17th century amidst heavy persecution, with the earliest chapels built after the 1689 Act of Toleration. Congregation numbers increased steadily, leading to a huge boom in chapel building at the turn of the 19th century. People flocked to large gatherings to hear the word of God in their own language. After turning their backs on the Anglican Church, and its failure to meet the needs of Welsh communities. In my stag in South Wales, there was a new and growing Baptist community, resulting from an influx of people coming to work in the ironworks. The first meetings were held in homes and pubs, and there were splits and reconciliations. As the congregation grew, it set upon building its own chapel in 1832. A local builder, Mr. Hurley, was contracted to carry out the work, which cost £60, a debt which seemed a huge financial burden to the congregation. The first chapel would have almost certainly been a typical long wall chapel with entrances on the long side. But within eight years, the building became too small and in 1841, a second building was opened. This time, the cost was over tenfold at 666 pounds. And the new chapel was bigger at 44 by 33 feet, still in a long wall style. In contrast to the ritualistic architecture of the Anglican churches, the simple interior was designed purely to allow a maximum number of people to see and hear the preacher with the pulpit against the front wall, seating arranged around it. The opening ceremony was a big affair, with 16 ministers preaching over two days, finished off with a valedictory address. Dirty and hot after a long shift at the ironworks, workers came home to wash themselves physically, but to the chapel for religious cleansing, enrichment, education and debate. At this time, the chapel had no internal baptistry, and new members were led in procession to the nearby River Llanvi to be baptised. The 1850s were eventful times, with the congregation now numbering 700. The iron industry was in decline, and the deep mining coal industry still in its infancy, causing economic uncertainty. A major cholera epidemic swept the area. All this uncertainty coincided with the national revival of 1859 and brought more people to the chapel, which was enlarged again. The building was doubled in depth and it was probably at this point that a pediment was added to the front wall to create what was by now the standard form of gable entry chapel. This new form and style allowed the chapel to announce itself as a recognisable religious building as non-conformity gained new confidence. The interior was reorientated to give a theatre-style auditorium that was far more impressive embodying the congregation's new sense of identity. The chapel was the social and cultural hub of a community, with events on throughout the week. Reverend Richard Hughes, a charismatic preacher, established various festivals, eisteddfodau and performances. One eisteddfod included a lecture titled Geological Facts and Biblical Truths. Are they contradictory? and the annual Sunday School Festival. The Reverend Aaron Morgan established a Welsh school at the chapel, and in 1898, the chapel was enlarged with a vestry and schoolrooms added to the back. 
education was considered particularly important within the non-conformist tradition. Every member was encouraged to read and understand the Bible for themselves. Another notable minister was Reverend Edward Jones, Yorwerth D. He had worked in the mines and was injured on five occasions before joining the Llangollen Welsh Baptist Academy and so had a particular empathy with the working men of the area. Coal mining was by now the biggest employer and again brought more people to the area. Yorwerth D carried out 651 baptisms at Bethania as well as visiting the Welsh coal mining communities of Pennsylvania. The Great Revival, the last and greatest religious revival in Wales, took place in 1904 to 1905. 158 new members were baptised at Bethania. In 1906, a new chapel was commissioned from Maesteg-born architect Sir William Beddo Rees. Built in the classical Beaux-Arts style, Bethania is considered to be Rees's greatest architectural achievement. This chapel is what we can see in place today. The chapel is not really any bigger than the previous one, but the style of architecture made a statement about the strength and optimism of the congregation. The facade consists of three bays, each defined by pilasters topped by a decorative shield. The wide central bay has an entrance flanked by large oculi with quarter keyed dressings. It is gabled with a semi-circular light. The facade is finished off by urns above the pilasters and a carved stone set at the peak of the gable. The interior has seating for 1001, provided by plain wooden pews. The entrance lobby is separated from the main chapel by a screen with stained glass panels, with open stairwells to the gallery. The gallery runs around all four sides, the rear side being largely taken up by the organ. The gallery is carried upon cast iron columns, which, at the sides, continue to an arcade of six delicate round arches. The front of the gallery is of cast iron with decorative panels. The pulpit is on a raised rostrum on a single pedestal and is accessed by stairs either side. The Seth Vaur, where the chapel elders sat, is bounded by railings with cast iron panels similar to those of the gallery. Under the Seth Vaur sits the baptistry, for the first time allowing baptisms to take place within the chapel itself. Entering from behind the pulpit wall, the tile-lined tunnel led the converts into the main body of the chapel to be immersed before the congregation. During the 20th century, nonconformity saw a slow and steady decline as a result of two world wars, a massive reduction in industry, and the changing social makeup of many communities. Bethania is now Grade II star listed as one of the best surviving architectural achievements by a major chapel architect in his powerful Beaux Arts style. The congregation moved out in 2004 and the chapel is now under the care of the Welsh Religious Buildings Trust. Chapels were once the centres of cultural, political, educational and religious life in Wales. Today, many stand neglected and forlorn, but their historical importance in preserving Welsh language and culture is immeasurable. <laughs>